A very good evening to you. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Sports Tonight. This is the midweek edition of the show. Promises to be as exciting as always. My name is Tony Bitoy. I'd like to say a very big thank you to you for joining us on the show uh, this evening. And also promise you that if you stay with us for the next 52, 53 minutes of Sports Tonight, we'll be doing what we love to do, which is to uh, engage you, entertain you, um, and update you with the latest in the world of sports. Today, um, it's not going to be any different. We have a very loaded show for you. Um, of course, today we will spend some time towards the end of the show probably uh, to talk about the 2015 Federation Cup. Quarterfinal games have been decided for both the men and the women. We now have an idea of the last four teams standing. For the women, there was a big, big upset uh, because the defending champions, Rivers Angels, crashed out. We'll talk about that in details towards the end of the show. Of course, we'll also tell you uh, the quarterfinal pairings uh, for the 2015 Federation Cup. I beg your pardon, semifinal pairings. And those games will be played in a week from now, August 19. So we'll talk about that extensively uh, on the show tonight. But in case you've forgotten, we want to start off the show tonight the way we started it yesterday. Uh, paying respect to one of our fallen heroes. Um, someone that um, has come to be identified, of course, with August 12th. Uh, from 1989, about 26 years ago, when this man, you seen on your picture, Samuel Okwaraji, actually being flashed a yellow card by a Togolese referee. So, this moment when he slumped onto the, on the pitch, 10 minutes to the end of the game, and passed on, and then to, of course, the line in state that took place right there. Uh, inside the National Stadium with the likes of Stephen Keshi, Ademola Deshino, Eti Messin, uh, Leitu Chiokafo, and some of his teammates, Samson Siasia, what you see on your screen. August 12th has become a feature in Nigerian sports, a landmark uh, for Nigerian sports, all because of Samuel Suchukuma Oparaji. Tonight, as we told you on the show yesterday, we'll be doing a lot um, to remember him. The NFF yesterday... Uh, promised, and they lived up to it, at every venue of today's quarterfinal game of the Federation Cup, the portrait of, of Aparaji was displayed, and uh, all the players honored him before those games were played. But on the program tonight, we are going to be de de devoting a whole lot of the show to the memory of uh, Samuel Sochukuma Aparaji, who slumped and died 26 years ago, right there inside the National Stadium, Sioux Lagos, during a World Cup qualifying game between Nigeria and Angola. Of course, Kaude Tijani will be joining me after this break, and uh, we'll be taking a look at the life of Oparaji and the lessons we can learn from this man. And um, there's a little surprise for you because the House of Reps today ordered that the Nigerian Football Federation should do something to immortalize uh, Samuel Sochukuma Oparaji. And we'll also be talking about something that happened on that day that people do not talk about too often. Apart from Samuel Okwaraji, who slumped and died on August 12th, about six fans also lost their lives that day. It was such a black day for Nigerian sports. It was like the angel of death was hovering around the national stadium that day. So tonight we'll talk about all of that, and uh, we will try um, to just take you back in time 26 years ago so that we will always remember Samuel Sochukuma Okwaraji. But then, what role do you have to play? on the program tonight. We want you to be active. We want you to be interactive with us on the program tonight. Via feedback, the usual way we do it, we expect you to talk to us, um, of course, about Samuel Tukuma Kwaraji, what lessons we can learn from it for the current crop of players that we have for our national teams and for our administrators, what lessons can we learn uh, in terms of putting facilities in place to prevent accidents uh, during emergencies like what happened 26 years ago. So talk to us. Give us your own opinion to this issue via Facebook, via Twitter. We will be willing to give as much time as possible to this discourse on the program tonight. All right? So please get ready to be a part of all that we'll be doing uh, on the show this midweek. It's not just about the feedback. We also want to tell you how you could be a part of all that we're doing on Channels TV. You could watch us on our website, www.channelstv.com. And you could also watch us on youtube.com slash channelsweb. All right? 
If you want to watch us on your iPad, your iPhone, your BlackBerry, you could just click on m.channelstv.com and um, if you go one step further, download the channels app for Android, iOS, Windows, from their respective stores, you will be able to watch us real time and enjoy the entire package. Sports is just a little bit of it. You'll be able to enjoy the entire package uh, on, of channels, not just the sports. You enjoy the, the, the news. You enjoy the business, the health, entertainment, everything that there is to Channels TV, you will uh, enjoy. And of course, as you send those comments, just don't forget to tell us where those comments are coming from so that we can appreciate you a lot more uh, on the program tonight. Okay? So that's the setting for what we'll be doing. Uh, on the show this midweek, August 12, 2015, 26 years after we're dedicating this show to the memory of our fallen hero, Samuel Sochukuma Okwaraji. We'll return with more. Kyle Detijane will be joining me after this time out. Join us again. All right, thank you for staying with us. It's time for us to move on on the show. And I want to quickly uh, start off the show tonight by introducing uh, someone that we uh, respect as um, a sports historian who keeps records and facts. And um, that has been of great service to Nigerian football of late. Let me introduce to you my first guest on sports tonight this midweek, um, Kyle Detijani. And uh, Kyle, what a day um, to, be, to be on, uh, um, on sports tonight. On a day like this, uh, remembering what happened some 26 years ago uh, when that tragic incident happened. But before I uh, bring you in, we need to let people understand why we're talking about this man. It was not so much about the incident, although at that time it was strange for people to slump and die, but we've had cases like that before. What made Okwaraji's case very different is because of the kind of person that he was. Exactly. The kind of person that he was, uh, shocking. I mean, uh, the biggest example, I think, uh, is that apart from uh, the credibility of his life, uh, the humility, education, most of the players now, you, I, I have a lot of players that would like, you know what, I just want to travel. The doctor, are you in school? They are like, you know what, I just want to be like Mikel. I say, you don't understand. Quick example, Sunday Ulisse, final year in Lasso, they brought the passport and the visa and the contract. So, but with Ulisse, with uh, Okwaraji, he went all the way. Doctor so, of law. Which means... University of Rome. Be, which means you could be that good and still get to that level. Of education but that's number one number two is you know he doesn't worship money if he does it will really not be played for nigeria like that because it had a lot of problems with its clubs uh, in europe you know i mean we were, we were discussing about the castle ball case the castle ball said late the castle ball said he was shocked when he got there he was having problems his, his elder brother patrick said one of the biggest problems he had in fact that uh, he held it against um, some uh, some of the uh, uh, club uh, authorities then they were trying to let him know you cannot be playing for Nigeria committee. It's like, we are going to mm. reduce your money. Mm. He said he doesn't care. He just needs to play for Nigeria. It's much more than money. So that's it. He was even planning to hold a press conference after the game, according to his brother anyway, uh, that um, uh, he spoke with some of his colleagues and he does not see the enthusiasm in them, the patriotism. To play for Nigeria. Just for the pride, not the money. Exactly. Meanwhile, we are now saying, when you compare that time, Oh, you and I believe these guys were, the, uh, the, uh, the players then really wanted to die for Nigeria. And he, from his own point of view, is saying he didn't even see enough desire to commit everything to Nigeria, which he eventually did. So, you know, there's so much to learn from his life. Very short, but what he achieved, some will never achieve for life. Mm. That's a, a very, very short. And um, he, he was that strong uh, psychologically about what he wanted to do. He wanted to go to the World Cup. He wanted to lift it. He was not the captain, but he was playing the role of a captain to a good extent. You know, urging them on, uh, with, him, with his body language, with his behaviors. You don't have to say, listen, I want to be captain. He was saying, you know what, it's not about the money. He was saying, you know what, my club, stay in there. I want to play for my country. My country is... That was exactly what Rakiti Yekini was saying. So these things can really count a lot. And, we, I mean, we miss him for that. We miss him. And uh, he, unfortunately, his colleagues said that they were so sober after his death, they are like, you know what, we are going to qualify for some. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. Mm. I mean, that Cameroon game, uh, all the things that happened. After. Listen to him, this is very strange. This is um, uh, the player saying, Okadi saying, you know what, it's not about the money, guys. Let's do this for Nigeria. Let's do this. All of a sudden, Slumdan died. A month later, everybody, all the um, lesson was gone. 
we, we had a, I remember that time very much. The, the, we had the Dubai Hotel, uh, mile two. We had all the players not wanting to come, talking about money, fighting there, and their coaches calling. It was appalling. We went to play against Cameroon with a team that was not a team, not together. So Sam just died. Sam who, who epitomizes uh, integrity when it comes to, you know, putting his country first. That's why it's absolutely lovely. And you know what? Whatever you say, I was absolutely happy yesterday mm. when Demola Lajire, you know, sent a press release. He said um, uh, the president of Nigeria Football Federation called the mom. I quickly called Sam Okaraji's mom. And trust me, they were really, I've never seen, I've been talking mm. to her. Oh, 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 